Hello everybody, good evening. This is Chris and this is day 35 of my 90 day challenge where I talk about presentation skills, speaking tips, and life and leadership in general. Today we're going to answer the question how to counter these challenges. And uh, a, um, a lady sent us this list of challenges that she encounters whenever she, she gives speeches or presentations. And she said that she's having some challenges with regards to finding the right words in front in front of the audience, forgetting other terms, and stage fright. And we're going to talk about that, how to counter these challenges. But before that, let me just shout out those who are joining us. Hannah May, hello. Everybody who's joining us in a while, or even those who will be uh, watching this, uh, uh, or later on, even if it's not live, hello again. To, also to Marianne, hello. And to to the one who sent this, I won't mention your name because I haven't asked permission yet. But so this is a real challenge by a person who is giving presentations at work. And she said, one challenge is finding the right words in front of an audience. You know, you can do a lot of things to counter this. First is if you're referring to, to words that, that will come out of your mouth whenever you speak, like impromptu or extemporaneously, what you can do to enhance your, your arsenal of words is to, to read a lot. You need to read a lot, uh, listen to a lot of speakers. You need to learn a lot because when you learn a lot, as you learn a lot, a lot of concepts, a lot of learning, a lot of skills, you will learn a lot of words as well. And I believe that with those uh, words that you have now, you can use them in your speeches, in your presentations. So read a lot, listen a lot, learn a lot. Second, what you can do is to, to prepare. If it's a speech or presentation, then you can prepare beforehand and you can write down the words that you'll be using, right? You can write down, you can type it, and you can, you can familiarize yourself with your speech, with your manuscript, with your script. And that way, when you are there in front, you'll, you will not be so much of at a loss of words because you've prepared for it. So what you can do if this is a prepared presentation where you wrote it down, is to read it several times. Keep uh, the, the key word is repetition. So read it, read it, say it out loud. So read it out loud and then try to deliver it out loud as well several times and try to, to get that familiarity level wherein you can deliver it even without notes already. And with, with that, I believe that you can have the words with you because you've been practicing for how many times repeated, repeatedly practicing, I believe that will help you just have the words that you need. You, you prepared for it and you practiced for it. Another thing, of course, again, reading, learning a lot, having all those words in your vocabulary, in your arsenal. The second is to prepare and uh, practice it repeatedly, out loud, really delivering it. And third is to, if you're again going back to impromptu, is to just keep on practicing. Keep on practicing and try to, the, the terms, the words that you want to use, you integrate it in your life, in your day-to-day -day living. Because when you're familiar with your words in normal conversations, it will just come out when you are presenting, whether you're in front of 10 people, 100 people, or 1,000 people. It will come out. Why? Because it's part of you already. So if you can find a way to integrate it in your system. And I know this will be a bit challenging, especially if, you're, if the language that you use at work or at, uh, normally in, in your home uh, is, is uh, a different language than the language that you'll be using in your presentation. For example, uh, at home, I would be speaking in Ilocano in Kankanay. That's my native tongue, uh, uh, Tagalog. But then you will later on present in English or, or Filipino. Then that's where the challenge comes in. 
But what you can do is you can practice it also. I believe that you can have groups that you can join, like Toastmasters. That's where you can practice presenting in English. Or if you're in church or a, a group of friends, you can practice and try to speak in the language that you usually use when presenting. So that when you present in front of an audience, it will be not, it won't be new because you've been doing it. All right. So those are my three simple uh, responses to to counter the first challenge: finding the right words in front of the audience. In front of the audience, we'll edit that later on. Hello to those who just join us, Sam, Margie. Second challenge that our friend uh, shared is forgetting other terms all right forgetting other terms now let us qualify that or let us clarify that the the question i would like to ask you is do you really need to use that particular term is it really necessary because if it's not then change it to, to a, a different term into a term that that's more familiar to you that will that's the term that will come out in that very moment that you will say and, and say that term. But if your answer is yes, that you need to use this term, then again, you can integrate it in your life. You can have it in your notes. You can have it in your manuscript in, in, or, or practice it. You make sure that you will remember that particular term so you won't forget it. But again, don't be so... Uh, what's this boxed or chained by your uh, by your scripts by your by your terms by the the words that you've written down just in case you for you forget them in the middle of your presentation I believe that you still know your message you still know other ways to express it other words to use to refer to that and you don't have to be chained by 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 that shackle of trying to use a specific term if it it can be substituted by something else so it shouldn't be much of a worry to you but again if it's something so technical and you want to have it then write it down and and, and carry it with you even that just one little piece of paper containing that one particular term with you then then do that if you have to but most of the time it doesn't have to so that's the second challenge again the challenge that our friends sent is finding the right words in front of an audience we uh, we gave you three tips for that and then for getting other terms again check do you really need it if not then you can use other terms if yes then uh familiarize it familiarize it or have it in your notes and finally my friend finally the, the third challenge that our friends sent us is stage fright. So how do you counter stage fright? Oh, my friend. I've been talking about this. I've been talking about confidence, about, about conquering your stage fright, about conquering your fears. And first is to change your mindset. Change your mindset that you can befriend your stage. You have to think that your audience are, are your friends and they want you to succeed. I say they are your friends because they want you to succeed, even if you don't know them at all. I believe that a regular, a normal audience, regardless of their profession, they want the speaker the, in front of them to succeed. So they are in your side. All right? So mindset. Another thing about mindset is the sense of of purpose your purpose there is to 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 serve them to to give something to them and you're not there to to trying to impress them or think about uh, will will they applaud me will they like me will they all these things that are directed to you you change that to them focus on your audience and focus on your message delivering that to your audience there are a lot of ways that you can uh, exercise that you can practice to, to lessen the stage fright. And I, I encourage you to, to go and join Toastmasters. 
I encourage you as well to join my workshop, Speak 2.0, Intensive Public Speaking Workshop. I'll be sharing with you other techniques, other things that you can use to, to conquer that stage fright and to up your, your level of confidence. And again, I've been, I've been saying this, to, to have this level of confidence, you need to have this level of competence. And that is why all the tips that we're talking about uh, in, in this series of videos, in even in this video alone, you have to integrate it, put them together. And it, when you are able to gain this level of competence in, in speaking, you also have this level of confidence because it's like a loop that just goes on and on. The more competence you gain, the more confidence you will have. And the more that you gain more competence as well, and you just keep on adding and adding and adding. And I believe that way, you will be able to conquer stage fright. And that goes with you not having to worry about finding the, the right words or forgetting other terms and not knowing what to say about your message. All right? So to our lady friend who sent these challenges, I hope this helps you. And again, I encourage you to join, to join Speak 2.0 on May 25 or in the other dates that we will be having later on. You sign up now, just go to the link bit.ly forward slash speak bagel. The, the link is provided in the captions of this video or in the comment section. I hope this serves you, my friend. I believe you can counter this and you can grow your competence and confidence in public speaking, in your presentation skills. And when you do this, I believe that it will help you grow as a person, as a leader as an individual. Again, thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Don Don. Thank you, Chafet. Thank you, Sam, Margie, Marian, Hannah Mae, Levy. Thank you, you just joined. You can watch this again. Thank you for the likes, for the hearts, for your responses. You can also uh, follow me, like my page, where we will be posting this as well. And share your insights, your comments, your experience. You can also share this to a friend who needs it. Again, this is Chris urging you to grow your competence in public speaking because this will help you in serving other people, in serving at work, in serving wherever you are. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.